Okay, next we actually have a brother and sister team, which is uh, fantastic. Um, Pavel Novak and Agata, Agata? Novak, perfect, uh, Novak. Pavel Novak is the lead UX designer at Future Processing, a leading Polish software company. He is a graduate of computer science at Silesian University of Technology and shares his passion for UX and design as the organizer of World Usability Day uh, Silesia, an international conference on usability and user-centered design. His sister, Agata, is one of the core organizers of the international conference World Usability Day Sil Silesia and Agile Silesia meetups in the Silesian region. She works as a service design specialist for future processing and conducts her own course on design thinking at the design faculty of Enterprise Academy in, oh boy, this is a tough one, Glewice? Glewice, Glewice. Pavel and Agata have a really interesting presentation for you today on what designers can learn from wheelchair rugby players. Put your hands together for this great team. <coughs> Hello. Okay. Um, do you hear me well? Yeah. Hello. So. so thank you for the nice introduction. My name is Agata and... Yeah, I'm Pavel. We are brother and sister. Yeah, definitely. That's it. We are working for the software development company. So we are doing software and uh, some applications and cool stuff. Basically, the things you do also. But today, we're going to introduce you to the project we are doing. And it's from a totally different domain. So. OK, so let's start then. Is it working? OK. So imagine that you want to spend your weekend and doing something completely different, something that you have never actually done before. Well, that's my actually assumption. Uh, this is you. You're standing in the line. You're standing in the line to the uh, special sports event in your community, rugby tournament. But not the normal rugby as we know it, but the wheelchair rugby tournament. Um, probably you know nothing or very, very, very little about the sport. So uh, I'm guessing you're going to head uh, to the information point to understand what is this event uh, all about. You're going to pass some beverages and some uh, candy stops uh, going to the information point. You could probably get a balloon there or maybe your face painted, uh, something to drink. Finally, you reach the information point when you get the, the flyers, the information about the program, the whole event. Uh, of, of course, you can also buy there some, uh, some objects connected with the sport, as, for example, um, sport fun gadgets, uh, t-shirts, scarves, and caps. And you, you feel satisfied with the information, and you're heading to the main uh, sports hall. Uh, there's also on your way uh, a gallery with pictures, some screenings, there's an emergency point for some unfortunate fellows, and a big uh, swimming pool with plastic balls for children. You reach the main sports hall and there's a volunteer, specially prepared, who's, uh, go who's going to show you a place and, you know, show you around and, uh, and interest you in, in what is happening on the, on the pitch. Uh, so you sit. You watch the game. Uh, the game is commented by the professional speaker who's, uh, who's, talking, who's telling you all about what's happening on the pitch. There are cheerleaders uh, who, who are cheering and dancing and singing for the winning team. And of course, there's a huge golden cup that both uh, teams are fighting for. If you decide to go um, outside, for a moment uh, between, the, between the games, you can go back or you can actually take the hard way and see some um, stuntmen, uh, disabled stuntmen, who are performing their acts on the, on the slalom with uh, obstacles. You can also try it out if you want and sit on the wheelchair and actually do it yourself. Uh, at the end, there's also a place for you to perform if you have a need to, uh, to use an open mic, say something nice to the organizer or even sing a karaoke. Okay, um, this customer journey map was designed by Sebastian. Um, Sebastian um, mm -hmm. is a tetraplegic. Um, he suffered of 
the injury of, of, of his spine. So the upper part of his spine was damaged during an accident. He has paralyzed legs and um, he's able to use his arms, but he has only a little function in his hands. So he can grab some things and um, draw in, yeah, that's why the drawing looks very nice, but, but it's, uh, yeah, you know. So, Sebastian is a wheelchair rugby player, and um, we were honored to work with him, as like with his, uh, his uh, fellows from the wheelchair rugby uh, team. During the workshops we were conducting since septem September 2013, um, the workshops was, uh, were organized in our company. Um, during the, the project we, we are doing together, we call it the Betterment Project, and it's an accompanying project to World Disability Day Silesia Conference. Um, as uh, it was mentioned before, we are organizers of World Disability Day Silesia, and uh, every year we are trying to go beyond, beyond the normal conference and do something else, uh, and do some participatory projects, and, and, and uh, use our energy and, and, and motivation to um, not just to organize the conference, but, but to help someone. We feel that it's cool. So this last year, we decided to make the uh, participatory project with uh, NGO. Um, the theme of the conference was healthcare, collaborating for better systems. So we were looking for the NGO we can work with. And that's how we found the Integration Sports Club, the Riders, from Mikow City in Silesia. And we start our collaboration. So the first assumptions, we are really lucky to, uh, to be friends with and to collaborate with, uh, with people who not only are helping us with, with the conference, but they really want to do something extra after the working hours, do something educational, fun, and also something meaningful. So we meet with our team and we, we were talking about what we can actually do with our ca ca competences and capabilities. We kind of uh, evaluated it because our team is pretty much interdisciplinary. Everybody's a little bit connected with IT. We have QAs, we have developers, marketing also, people from the marketing designers. Uh, and we are willing to do a lot of fun stuff, but we have limited time. It's limited probably to evenings and some weekends. So when we, when we evaluated all of it, we, we decided that maybe the best option for us is to find a, a local NGO that we can support by using some service design techniques, uh, working together hand in hand, uh, evaluating their issues, their challenges, and maybe we can we can do something about it. Make it maybe together we can we can redesign or rethink the the service to make it a little bit more uh, uh, more functional, uh, better, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit better. Uh, so that that was the first assumption. We didn't actually know what's going to happen, but we we were pretty sure that there's going to be fireworks at the end. So when we met the riders for the first time. Um, we actually met with three people from the management and they told us about everything that the, the club is, uh, is doing. We assumed while talking to them that the users are actually wheelchair rugby players, that they are not a part of the club itself, they are the team and the club, the three, four people uh, involved in the process are the service provider for, for, the, for the wheelchair rugby team. So we started the, a little bit of the analytical process with uh, stakeholders interview, mapping, touch points, talking about all the services that they are doing, organization, um, finding the, the finance, grants, uh, sponsors, all this kind of stuff, logistics, taking the riders to the trainings and taking them back and so on and so on. And then we felt that we don't know too much so we have to change a little bit our process and go back, step, uh, go step back and meet the team and meet the, the whole club. So we put on our, our investigators' um, hats and we took, some, we took some microphones, notes, to, some things to make, to make notes and we visited riders for the first time on the training. Yeah, definitely, it was like it, and um, it was a great opportunity for us because it was the first time we were able to meet uh, the players, 
and to learn a little bit about themselves, about the history of their lives and accidents and motivations related to sport and um, about the wheelchair rugby itself. So we were very curious and anxious about the whole um, whole meeting because we had never an opportunity to work with disabled people. So so we were yeah we were we were a little bit anxious, but everything uh, went pretty pretty well. So um, this is the wheelchair rugby game. Um, we thought that we will meet some disabled people week, and we met real athletes who are playing very fast and even aggressive game and um, we had the opportunity to, to listen to the colliding wheelchairs. This, the, these are not normal wheelchairs, it's more like a tank or something. <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah, and we felt this uh, beautiful spirit of sport and uh, what, uh, I think it's, uh, the, 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 this game shows what was the real meaning of sport and uh, for, for those guys it's, it's more than, than a sport, it's the way for them to uh, go back to life, go back to society after the horrible accident um, which happened when they were young, in our age or even younger. So, a little bit about the game. Um, it was designed in Canada in the 70s. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, hooray! <laughs> and it was called Murder Ball because of the, 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 of the pace and aggression and everything. Um, you maybe um, know the documentary called The Murder Ball. It's made by MTV in 2004. It's about uh, uh, Canadian uh, representation of, of rugby. Um, this game is designed for uh, tetraplegics. Um, it's the only game they they, they can uh, play, and it's quite. The rules are quite simple. It's it combines basketball, rugby, volleyball, and hockey rules. Yeah, but it's really really simple, and 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 basically that's it. We 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 had also an opportunity to play with them, and believe me, when you will sit on the wheelchair rugby, you have no chances to win. So. Yeah, we, we learned a lot about the sport, but we also had a chance to meet the team, meet the, meet the riders, uh, all of them, and to learn about the, the people involved in this, in this service, as we, as we said before. And that was the moment when we realized that the, the riders are the people. It's not only the management, the, the, the service provider, as we called them at the beginning, but all of them, the, 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 the players, they are involved in the process. They have their own responsibilities. But because of the lack of the good ways of communication between the managers and the, and the players, uh, the, all those activities that they are promoting and they are, they are um, offering are not as good as they could. So we, we somehow, uh, both, both, both sides, we and the riders, we identified it as a, as a huge challenge. So as you can see here on the picture, the riders are uh, the club. It's actually two teams, the riders and the sitting horses. And it's over 20 players from different cities in Silesia. Some of them even uh, actually lives in the uh, social, uh, social house. I, uh, probably, I don't know if it's the good, uh, correct, uh, correct name for in English. So also we have coach, we have judges, we have technical staff, uh, a number of eager volunteers, growing number, family, friends, and one dog, pretty cute one. So, as I said, um, we identified the problem of communication. It wasn't a lack of enthusiasm, it wasn't a lack of, um, of people, of energy, of ideas, but the problems and process, the processes of communication and integration inside the club was causing and uh, was resulting in um, a little bit. Uh, a little bit uh, less. Uh, less uh, um, a little uh, smaller efficiency of the of the different activities because as the riders are fantastic on the field and they are actually the sixth uh, 
the sixth team, team in, in, in the first league in Poland, uh, they are not actually as good uh, on the, uh, outside of the pitch. So, as you can see here, the, the activities that they are offering, the promotion of disabled sport, uh, the social education in schools in different, in different communities and organizations and building the social awareness and organizing uh, sport events that will get around the communities and, 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 and build the social awareness that I said um, before. Uh, are not as good uh, as not are not as good developed. Mm. So when we sat together with the riders, with the whole team, we decided that we need to make it our challenge. We formed it in this question: How might we work out better strategy of communication, supporting a sense of integration inside the riders club? Then we thought how we actually can do it, and we chose one common goal: the goal that's going to be common for them and for us. Uh, it was not an easy choice, but we uh, decided that we're going to try to organize the tournament, the rugby, wheelchair rugby tournament, and that's going to be at the goal, uh, helping to achieve our challenge. Yeah. So with the redefinition of our design challenge, um, we also redefined our role. Um, we were no longer designing for wheelchair rugby players. We started to design with the wheelchair rugby players, and even going further, we created the environment for them to design for themselves, and they were designing everything. Uh, we, uh, we started our um, workshops in October, so since October they are designing and doing things for, uh, for the uh, club. And um, we used design thinking uh, mindset to, 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 to during the workshops. We are meeting once, even sometimes twice, uh, twice a week with them, organizing workshops after our work or during weekends. And we were, um, now it's time for people with bingo uh, cards because I will use a lot of <laughs> names. Uh, so the writers were designing personas. Not, not yet bingo. Uh, designing personas, customer journey maps, infographics, and a lot of things we know from service design or user experience design. And um, our role was to facilitate and, uh, the, the whole process and to coach them. Sometimes we were the domain experts in some fields, but we were not trying to impose some um, solutions on them. We were just trying to make them be creative and design for themselves. And it was very surprising because they get to know each other better. They were surprising that um, they know a lot of things. They can do a lot of things by, by them, themselves and they didn't know about it. And once even uh, one, one of the writers um, told us that um, we don't want your fish. Um, just give us the fish rod and show us how to fish, <laughs> and, and we will do everything by our own. So. Uh, so at the end, as a result of those months of workshops, we had like a pile of ideas, paper prototypes, um, sketches, considering the, the tournament that we, w we wanted to, to organize. Uh, so as you can see here, there's the ideas considering the tournament, the, how we're going to uh, do the marketing, how we're going to get the volunteers, uh, what we're going to do with the partners, how we're going to uh, attract the sponsors, and so on and so on. So we, we had it all, but then someone smart uh, from the riders actually asked us, okay, that's everything, uh, it's, 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 it's awesome what we did. And we are really amazed, but the question remains how are we gonna connect those dots and how are we gonna how are we gonna do it? We know what we want to do, but we actually don't know how to organize ourselves. Yeah, so um, we decided to introduce Scrum. Any bingo? No. Uh, we decided <laughs> to introduce Scrum uh, to to the riders. And um, we are we have an experience in agile methodologies, uh, especially in Scrum, in IT projects. But we felt that it will be very suitable for for them to use it as an organizational framework uh, to organize their work. So the last three workshops in December uh, we spent on coaching them in agile methodologies. We showed them the rules of Scrum and it was very funny because they found it very easy to understand because um, 
there are a lot of equivalents and, and analogies in the uh, wheelchair rugby. Even the name Scrum is from rugby. So, so the coach was the product owner, people from staff behaves like a Scrum master, and the team uh, who is playing rugby is the development team. So for them, it was very easy to understand. We introduced them the task board and user stories and, and acceptance criteria and all of those things. And, uh, they understood it pretty well, even though sometimes they are telling us that we are doing some things wrong. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, so we felt that everything from now will start and, uh, uh, and is going to, to work fine. Yeah, so fulfilled with hope, we visited the riders for the last time before Christmas. We brought this metaphorical fishing rod of Scrum to them, and then we, we actually uh, land, uh, we, we realized that they are pretty afraid. They realized that this is the moment when maybe not split, but we have to split a little bit our competences, and the workshops are over, and this is the moment when they need to actually do and organize the, the tournament, and we won't be as much in, involved in the process as we were before. Uh, well, that was, that was a hard moment. We, we felt a little bit disappointed because filled with hope and then seeing all of it was disappointing for us and for them as well. But we thought it's, it's Christmas, <laughs> so let, give, us a, a, give ourselves a break and we will, we will just wait till the New Year's. It, be, and we will give ourselves a break and we talk it through again in January. So, uh, and we did. Yeah, um, so, yeah, we also, we, we had to redefine our role again. And um, um, the goal of the project was to improve the communication inside the, um, inside the, the organization, not to make the tournament by our own. We've got our own conference and, uh, and uh, they, it, it was, the project is for them and, and we want to help them, but uh, we don't want to work for them. For, for their goal because it's it it shouldn't it, it shouldn't yeah it, it doesn't make any sense so we um redefined our role again and became the, some kinds of consultants and agile coaches and from 7th of january 2014 uh, we had the we had the first sprint planning and there was a lot of people very motivated and and full of uh, great ideas we have chosen the the product owner and the scrum master who are doing Impressive work, <laughs> and um, we, uh, I, I'm sure that um, the riders are, are very aware of our role now in the whole process. Sometimes we are uh, helping them in some organizational tasks, but we are, we are trying to help them in the process improvements. So during every retrospection, we are talking with them, we are helping Scrum Master and Product Owner if it's needed, and it's... And it's I think it really works because um, we are after five three week long sprints and riders made a lot of great work. Um, the date of the event and the sports hall is already booked and they have some med media partners. Um, they invited teams from, from abroad, even from abroad. Um, there are two honorary patrons. Uh, one is the Salesian Medical University. Um, they created their own marketing strategy, uh, partnership affair, and um, they, they made visual identification. There are some articles about them and about, about the uh, tournament, which will take place in October or yeah, yeah cool. in October 2014 and the website is in progress so yeah and we are very happy that everything is going so so good mm. So to sum it up, uh, we uh, met the riders a couple of weeks ago when they decided to gather to choose the motto of the tournament, the motto that will, uh, the one sentence that will somehow explain and describe not only the tournament but the process that stands behind it. And we were really shocked, surprised and really happy when they chose to the motto teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cute and actually it sums up all the things that we are doing with them and they are doing together to, 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 to make the tournament happen. As I said at the beginning, we were hoping for fireworks, but we got the beautiful rainbow, and probably at the end there, are, there will be some fireworks. 
we, we are really proud that we are getting um, closer to achieve the challenge that we formed at the beginning. The, so, from this moment, from this place, we would really like to, to thank everybody who were involved in the process, the riders and our team from Future Processing. Uh, these are not, not all the people involved, yeah. there are much, much, uh, much more people involved, but still, a lot. And, and yeah, if you would like to join us um, and help in the preparations of tournament or just share this idea of rugby, uh, wheelchair rugby, um, so just, just you can uh, catch us everywhere here since 7 p.m. <laughs> or um, mail us or whatever. And, and, uh, and you have uh, to it, come in October. Yeah, and <laughs> definitely you are all invited in October uh, for the wheelchair rugby tournament. Uh, one more thing is, uh, I was thinking a lot about it uh, during this conference because um, there is, we are talking a lot about empathy and um, the thing we found out during the whole process is that empathy is not enough in the projects like this and it's the case of care, of real caregiving and experiencing of care, not just an empathy. And, and empathy is not enough in, in projects like this because um, you have to share um, the um, great moments, as like you have to share with them, uh, with, with, with the people we are working with, the moments of, of truth and when uh, the things is, are not going uh, right. So, so experience the ongoing process. Yeah. So basically that's it. Thank if you. you. Thank you very much.